The original working title of this film was Project Artemis, which makes sense. That is a thing in the movie, and it is the most interesting part of the movie. I see why they changed the title, though, because Project Artemis, the most interesting part of the movie, isn't even introduced until halfway through. Welcome to Box of Chocolates, where you never know what you're gonna get. I got to see Fly Me to the Moon a little bit early. There will not be any spoilers, no worries. But I was curious about this because of the cast, and it seemed like an interesting idea, having this woman, played by Scarlett Johansson, come in to help advertise NASA and the Apollo 11 mission and to get the American people on their side after there had been a lot of tragedy, a lot of mistakes along the way, a lot of difficulty in getting us to the moon, and she's here to kind of get people on board with the idea of this mission and eventually to film a fake moon landing that they can use just in case the real one doesn't succeed. But unfortunately, I found this to be a disappointment. We'll talk about the big reasons why later, but I want to start by giving credit where it's due and talking about the good things, mainly our cast. Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum are the leads, and they're really good. They have good chemistry. They were likable. Scarlett Johansson is this real go-getter. She's introduced immediately as being like extraordinarily good at her job of advertising and getting getting people to believe whatever it is that she's selling to them. She sells it really well. She's Scarlett Johansson, so you see why people want to be around her and like her and believe her. And so she's really good at that. And then Channing Tatum works for NASA. And the relationship that develops there is basically the strongest thing about the movie. And other than them, you also have Ray Romano, Woody Harrelson, Jim Rash. I would have liked to see a lot more from Jim Rash. I always loved him from Community. He's playing the director of the fake moon landing that they're filming, and so there's a lot of comedy that you can really mine from that situation, but the cast all around, good job. I like the setting. I do like movies that take place in this time period having to do with the space race, whether they're true stories or not. I just find it an interesting time period and concept to explore. So when you got like the production design, the outfits, the music, I think it does all of that really well. It's well made, it's good looking. And it is fun watching Johansson come up with a lot of these advertising ideas. I don't know how many of them might be true, or close to true, like she'll come up with a, a way to replace Snap, Crackle, and Pop on Rice Krispie cereal with the astronauts from Apollo 11. I'm pretty sure that didn't really happen, but it makes me curious how many similar things happen, and it's like how many of these advertising ideas would actually work. There's some fun to be had along the way of her coming up with all these crazy ideas and having to convince people of them. To get into my negatives though, unfortunately this story was just all over the place. It's very strange because a lot of the marketing, a lot of the, the plot synopsis that I saw advertised all over the place really talked about the idea of filming a fake moon landing. And I thought that's a really funny idea. You could do some fun stuff with that. And like I said at the beginning, that isn't even introduced until like halfway through the movie. And then even once it is introduced, it's only like, every other scene maybe that's actually about that. There's still a good chunk of the movie that's not about that. And that was the most interesting idea. Because until then, for the first hour or so, the question is, will this character be able to advertise the Apollo 11 mission to American citizens? And that's not a question? That's not an idea that has any dramatic tension? behind it. It's a very strange blend of real life events with fictional characters and a fictional story. Because we know the Apollo 11 mission succeeded. We landed on the moon. That's what's going to happen in this movie. So then the question of can this fictional character successfully advertise that to the American people? That's just a strange thing to make a movie about. It's not like it's a true story of the actual advertising of the time. And there's no metric by which to judge how well she is succeeding outside of maybe some lines of dialogue here and there. And it doesn't even matter because halfway through, it's not about that anymore. And now it's about filming a fake moon landing. So it's like, why did we spend an hour on that? So the film felt very confused. There are scenes in this movie that are just meant to be very straightforward, like inspirational drama 
about Apollo 11 and about NASA. And I'm like, you know, there's a bunch of movies that are about that already. And they're actually true stories. I don't see how this was the place for that. I actually got really bored during the third act because there are several scenes in the climax of the movie where you're just watching the Apollo 11 mission, where you're watching mission control and they're sitting there watching the screens and you're watching the rocket launch and you're watching them land on the moon slowly. And I'm like, isn't this a comedy about advertising and filming a fake moon landing? Like, why are we just watching the space mission happen again? I've seen that in many other places where they're interested in portraying it as accurately as possible. Why are we doing it here? In real life, there were three astronauts who tragically died in an accident leading up to this, and the movie addresses that, and they make Channing Tatum's character the launch director for that, and so he has kind of a little bit of trauma with him from experiencing that, and the guilt that he feels over wondering if he could have maybe done something differently to stop that from happening. And it just feels kind of weird because that is a real life tragedy. Those three men actually burned to death horribly. Channing Tatum's character is not a real guy. So to like have this fictional character experiencing PTSD over the real life event Okay, it's, it's just weird. It just doesn't feel like this is the movie to explore those ideas. This has fun ideas about being a quirky comedy about advertising and filming a fake moon landing. Those are the unique ideas that you have. Why are you trying to tackle like the real life dramatic events as if you're trying to be a true story? It would be like in Forrest Gump if the entire movie was about Forrest busting open the Watergate scandal. Like that's one scene and it's a joke. It's it's not like we're supposed to be inspired. Like we're, we're so happy that Forrest Gump brought the truth to light about Watergate. That would have been a weird movie. In Forrest Gump, the emotion comes from the fictional characters entirely. It's from Forrest's relationships with his mom and Bubba and Jenny. But this movie has Channing Tatum stand up to give an inspirational speech and characters are crying and the music is swelling emotionally. And it's like, you'll all know that you accomplished the hardest thing that anyone has ever accomplished and you should be so proud of yourselves. And we're going around the room and everybody's clapping and I'm like, this happened, I get that. But these are not the people who did it. These are fictional characters. I could just never overcome that barrier. It always prevented me from being as invested as I wanted to be. This should have just been a completely fictional story. And a lot of this could have been made better if the movie was just really funny. I chuckled one time. Now, my theater, a lot of people were actually laughing very hard quite often. This is gonna be crowd pleasing to certain people for maybe like a slightly older audience and people who just want to go and have an easily digestible, watchable time, because it is. It's totally watchable. It's totally fine and serviceable at giving you the cute chemistry between those two and just putting you in that time period if you're interested in that. But personally, I chuckled one time, and it wasn't even because of the dialogue. It was just because of Channing Tatum's delivery. And the humor is not like cringy or anything. It's just basic. It's like pleasant cute. Like, ah, I acknowledge that an attempt at humor was made. I am fine with that, but I did not laugh. It's very simple. It's very predictable. They literally do the thing where somebody or something near them is on fire and somebody goes, excuse me, you're on fire. And they're like, oh, how very flattering. And like, no, literally you're on fire. Like in 2024, we're, we're still doing that word for word unironically. It's all very simple. It's like the jokes that you expect to be made and any humor that comes from any of it is just gonna be from the delivery of the talented actors. That's why I really wish the movie had been about filming the fake moon landing because then you would have had a lot more Jim Rash and I love that guy. And because it felt so unfocused, that also made it feel too long. I'm just sitting there watching the Apollo 11 mission happen. And I'm like, why is this two hours and 10 minutes long? This should have been a 90 to 100 minute comedy. 
it just feels like it tried to do too much. Is it a comedy about advertising? Is it a comedy about filming a fake moon landing? Is it an inspirational drama that's partially true? Is it a romance? Luckily, you have the romance side that comes out fine, even though there are some cliches to that side too. Gee, I wonder, between the second and third acts, is there gonna be the part where the two main characters have to argue and split up? Because that happens in literally every movie ever made. But it's just all over the place and it feels unfocused and like they, they tried to throw every idea into the pot and just stirred it all together and slopped out onto a plate, whatever came out and it's just, it's too much. The strange clash of tone and plots was certainly unique, but it just made it really hard to get invested. I'm like you're trying to sell me on like being inspired by the true story of NASA and Neil Armstrong and all of these people. But also these characters that we're focusing on do not exist. And, and this is a goofy comedy about this thing that it's not actually even about because you introduced it halfway through. I don't know if the long-term plan was just, we gotta release this around the 4th of July, so we have to have the inspirational parts in there. I don't know, but we didn't need a movie about that. There are movies about that already. This should have just been a comedy and also one that was actually funny, please. So I'm gonna get Fly Me to the Moon a two and a half out of five. I was thinking a three for a while, but then we got to the third act and it was just so much leaning into the inspirational drama side of things, which is the completely pointless side that I just, I got quite bored and it's so middle of the road. It's so forgettable. It's so much of a waste of what it could have been. It's fine, it's not a bad movie. It's perfectly watchable, despite the fact that I think it should have been significantly shorter. When it comes out, I don't think it's something you have to rush out to see, but if it interests you, if the time period and this interesting clash of stories intrigues you, then it could be worth checking out at some point, but just very forgettable and I'm never gonna watch it again. But that's all I have to say about that. If you have seen Fly Me to the Moon, leave your thoughts down in the comments. Did you really get invested in this in a way that I couldn't? Did you find it funny or did you feel the same way I did where you were struggling to invest yourself because of the weird clash of fictional and non-fictional, comedic and serious, and it just never felt like it blended? I don't wanna just tell you my opinion. I wanna hear yours down in the comments below as well. Thank you so much. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more from me. We have long legs coming out this week. I'm so excited. Please be amazing, please. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you for the next one.